I'm Dr. Peter Leo. I'm a clinical assistant professor of dermatology and pediatrics at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. And today I'd like to ask the question about the root cause of eczema. What is it? What does it mean? How can we address it? And I would say that it is a key question, but unfortunately, it is not as easy as it looks. The root cause of atopic dermatitis seems to be somewhat elusive because it's not one thing. We think that it is multifactorial and probably different for different people. So some patients really do seem to have a primary genetic condition where they are not making enough filaggrin protein. For those patients, I feel pretty comfortable, confident, pretty comfortable that we can say, the reason you have this disease is because your skin barrier is supposed to be strong and tight, but it's leaky. So water leaks out very easily, like trying to hold water in a colander, and allergens, irritants, pathogens like bacteria and viruses, all these things, pollutants, can get into the skin, driving your immune system absolutely crazy, which then drives the inflammation and itch, which it turns out then in turn further damages the skin barrier and drives more inflammation. Now, in the middle of all this crossfire, of course, is the microbiome. The microbiome is also playing a role in this. And when the skin barrier is damaged, the microbiome becomes very abnormal. And in addition to that, the nerve endings in the skin actually change. So those nerve endings become different morphologically and they send this sensation of itch more easily. And then finally, we even have a bigger piece, the behavioral aspect, the mind-body connection in this condition actually changes too. People over time, they find that they have behavioral cycles of poor sleep, of stress and anxiety, and even just raw behavioral things. I have some patients when they're just feeling anxious about something or if they're getting upset, they just start scratching at their skin and that can trigger a whole flare up. So. In some patients, we could say the root, 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 root cause, if you go all the way down, is a genetic issue with filaggrin encoded by a gene called the FLG gene. And that explains some of it. But you can see even when the genetics is the first thing, right, there are other pieces that are really playing a role. So for a given day, the root cause, if you will, what triggered the flare up could be very, very different in the context of these things. It could be hot weather with sweating. It could be really cold, dry weather. It could be putting a fabric on that drove the skin crazy. Sometimes it might even be something somebody ate. But usually we're not that lucky that it's one thing. Sometimes you'll hear people say, well, I think it's all in the gut. And I think that's partially true. We think the gut is definitely involved because if you trace your skin around your lips, that becomes your gut. It's all part of the epithelium. So there's no doubt the gut's involved, but I don't think it's all in the gut or only in the gut because we know the skin is abnormal. We can show that the skin barrier is leaky and damaged. And we understand that, again, especially for patients like the ones we've described, their gut barrier is probably messed up too and impaired too, but that didn't necessarily come first and is definitely not the only piece. So it really makes it sense why it's so difficult to easily answer this question. But what we can think about is how can we get all of these aspects better and break all of these bad cycles? And what we find is that if we can do that, it sort of doesn't matter what the root cause was because like a forest fire, yes, it could be helpful to find the kid who threw the matches, started the fire, the arsonist, but at some point it doesn't matter anymore. That, patient, that person may be long gone. We have to put out the forest fire and get things back in order. And even if we never find that person, so long as they don't do it again, we're okay. Similarly with the skin, I think even if we never find one trigger or multiple triggers that are the key responsible things, if we can find things that we know are harmful and we can help the skin heal, get the barrier stronger, get the microbiome more robust, I think that for many patients, we can get them in a place where it didn't really matter what the original inciting factor was, but we have them in a good place now. I hope that's helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you.